Okay, so, so my personal item was my uh, UW diploma. I'm sure the guys over at UW are glad I got that. It's cool, don't worry, I'll grab it. Yeah, um, and, and it ties into this talk in some sense. But um, so basically what I'm here to talk about is basically why the future of learning has to be social. Um, as he said, I started a company called Booknetto, myself and my co-founder about two years ago. And the basic idea was all the tools for learning in our schools weren't very good. So how can we create new learning tools that students want to use and that will actually help administrators help students? And that was the beginning of a very interesting two-year journey. Um, so I'm, I'm sure right now it's been pretty much drilled into our brains at this point that this is an old way of learning. You know, Sitting down in lecture halls is not engaging. Um, people are staring at books not quite what we would opt for right now. And there's all sorts of new stuff, new modern ways of learning. So, you know, you, you go online to my learning space and um, you watch lectures and you use your mobile phone to learn. But um, we've never actually had anyone really And that's really has been what is at the, um, the crux of this debate between Asian ways of learning and modern ways of learning. So we're going to explore that now. Um, the, the biggest secret in education technology is that online learning isn't actually working, right? Um, we have 94% of online learners are dissatisfied with the experience. Um, the average engagement rate in online learning is 3 to 11%. So basically what that means is only 3% to 11% of your students, if you're teachers, actually do log in every week. Shocking. Um, average time spent when they log in is two hours a week. So that's pretty terrible, considering um, students spend up to eight hours a week or more on Facebook and other modern platforms. And there's a lot of reasons why, you know, from bad technology to it's not well designed to all of that. Um, so, but, but the, the real question that we need to ask, really, um, is whether, whether we're learning. Maybe that might be the smartest thing George Bush said. Um, and, and, and the interesting thing is there are now new trends that are actually showing us that maybe they're not. This is a really interesting website I saw. It's actually a web service where you pay and someone takes your online classes for you. The whole thing. Yeah, so basically, some of your students might not even be logging in. Um, so it's an interesting trend in ed tech, whether or not children are learning and whether or not they're actually even taking the courses themselves. So of course, the general idea is, you know, maybe we can do better. Um, so the interesting dichotomy really is the fact that, so we're caught between, well, we need online learning because classes are getting crammed up and we need a way to reach as many people as possible. But on the other end, it's not working. So what, what, do we, what can we do to make things better? So we have to go back to the basics. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are in educational psychology and stuff, but this is probably a very familiar um, graph that you've seen before. Um, so you have Bloom's taxonomy, and you go from remembering to understanding to applying to analyzing to evaluating and then to creating. And for the past two years, what me and my co-founder have been working on is how can we bring, how can we bring um, social learning methods to online? How can we bring the social learning methods that people have in class um, online, where people interact with other people and have discussion groups and stuff like that? It's pretty hard to design for that. Um, so, what we've basically tried to optimize is how can we allow students to do more analyzing, evaluating, and creating online, as opposed to more remembering, understanding, and applying. And um, the other reason why this is very important is that people actually learn more when they're learning together in groups than when they're learning from a lecture or when they're learning online. So if you look at that graph, you see that the only part, point in time when 
formal learning actually does anything good for us is actually between grade one to 12. By the time you get into undergrad and graduate school, you're learning more from people, your peers, than you are learning from the teacher. And by the time you get into work, you're pretty much learning nothing from any formal learning environment. So that's kind of interesting to, to know. Um, and, and basically what we also found is, with, even with respect to retention, so if you, do, if you go to a lecture, that's 5%. Um, most of online learning is mostly reading and audiovisual, so you're looking at maximum 20% retention. Um, in discussion groups, you go up to 50%. Practicing by doing, 75%. Teaching others, 90%. So it's kind of interesting to see where people are remembering the most um, when we learn um, informally versus formally. What one, one thing that has really influenced how we approach social learning um, is is what we call Zuckerberg's law. So Zuckerberg's law is that the rate at which people share information is doubling every year. So you're gonna share twice as much as you shared last year. And we like to assume that much of the stuff you're gonna be learning is stuff that people wanna learn. Um, so one of the things that we try and do on our platform is how can we get students to create more content? Um, on, on a typical online learning environment, a lot of the focus is on content that the teacher creates. So you have instructional designers and you have all the rollouts. But how can we get students to actually create st content that other students are going to learn from? And that basically brings us to why we think this is the future of online learning. Um, this is actually one of my favorite scenes in any movie. It's from The Matrix. Um, and in The Matrix, it basically sits down and then they download um, information um, to his brain about how Kung Fu works. And then he basically knows Kung Fu. And this is kind of how people imagine the future of social learning is. There's a huge, um, of, of online learning is, there's a huge divide in the community between personalization, which is what a lot of um, online learning and technology is optimized to do. So basically, oh, each person has the information they need based on how they learn, as opposed to social learning, where you basically get together in groups and figure it out together. Um, and we, as much as we admire that people can download information to their brains, we don't think that's how it's gonna work. Uh, we think that basically people are gonna figure things out in groups and that by creating active online environments where people can get together and share ideas together um, with their peers, that's how we're gonna improve the future of social learning. So we've been doing a lot of really interesting work um, with, uh, with trying to optimize for engagement levels. Um, at our company, we, did, we actually did some work with Ashoka um, over the summer where we got 600 of, of carefully selected social entrepreneurs from all over the world into a course. And we basically started learning about how do they do online learning and how can we optimize the process of how they do online learning. And we found some really interesting things. Um, one of the things we found, for example, was that introductions raise, if you, if you get people in a class to introduce each other, um, you raise the engagement in that class by up to 25%. Um, so very, very tiny things make a huge difference when it comes to social learning. And one of the big things we're pushing for is how can we get more people interested in finding out how we can get not just huge networks of people to learn online, but get huge networks of people to learn together and to learn well online. And that brings me to my final point. One of our favorite quotes um, over at Bucknado, we have it on our website, um, is... Um, I paid the schoolmaster, but it's the schoolboys who educate my son by Ralph, o, Ralph Waldo Emerson. And, and this is kind of sums up basically how we think about the future of learning online. Um, we think it's basically going to be people are going to learn in groups together, peer to peer. Um, and we're trying to build learning environments that embody that. And we think that that's actually the way to learn. It's timeless. It doesn't matter whether it's in primary school with your school friends trying to do homework together. It's in university when you sit down at a university cafe um, and work on problem sets together. Or online where massive groups of people can come together and learn together. Um, so thank you very much.